four years. Then he goes and plays and he's Roy Williams' assistant for all these years. So this guy's learned from the best. Starting lineups. Talked about the backcourt. You talked about the front court as well for North Carolina. Who else besides John Meeks? Does North Carolina have to be concerned about? Well, there's no doubt they have to be concerned about Demetrius Underwood, the Division Three transfer who uh, Pat Kelsey is so high on. And then Rain Smith can rain some threes. They got to get out on him. But the problem with them is they have a tremendous bench. So he's got to worry about those five and six other guys, you know, five other guys because they have an injury. That he's here tonight. Chris is. But that coach is here as well, sitting next to Roy Williams. Bobby Clemens is in the house. Oh, he did an unbelievable job wherever he was, and so did the guy sitting next to Roy Williams. Now they sit together. They used to sit apart. And here we go. This is the true freshman, Rain Smith, out of Australia. Underwood, lob pass, two hands. Babacar, five. Set play out of the locker room to get this crowd going. North Carolina not really ready for that back screen lob. Baseline, Baycock. It's a block. This was a set play out of the locker room. You're going to see that back screen. They clear out underneath. Rain Smith comes and sets the up screen. And that's a great pass. No pressure on the ball there. That's one of the things that Carolina has to do that they didn't do against Brown. They let Brown run all their stuff all the time. And Fye is a true freshman. Davis rises. Shot clock under 10. Garcia, a right hand. All freshman team in the Big East at Marquette. This kid is a really good player. Just starting to figure it out. Meeks will handle the ball. He'll play inside and outside. This is Underwood. Backing in. Big, strong. And has scored the ball well. Dawson Garcia with a rebound. And you see College of Charleston gets back really fast in transition. They're used to playing that way because that's what they do in practice every single day. Baycott lost it. Turnover. Neither team has turned it over a lot in their early schedule. College of Charleston's 3-0, North Carolina 2-0. Out to Smith, the Aussie. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what, Rich. Carolina has not done a good job this season in defending dribble penetration. Brown scored 44 points in the paint and only had five turnovers in the game. Five, the freshman got that. Garcia out high. Put a shoulder down. And a baseline run by Baycott results in a dunk. And you see, they made, they scored. And Kyle to Charleston runs and a made basket. Meeks. That's the tempo. It'll get them transition threes as well. Meeks thinking again. Right now, the Cougars on the boards. Oh. Smith has hit two threes. College of Charleston is out rebounding their opponents by almost 16 rebounds a game. That, now it's early in the season, it's only three games, but that is an unheard of number. Normally, Carolina, a tremendous rebounding team, it's one of their staples. College of Charleston has four guys at the table right now ready to check in. Well, you're going to see a good dribble penetration by Dawson Garcia. And then here, the drive and the kick. Nobody near Meeks. Very lucky there. And College of Charleston just too quick to the ball. And Rain Smith raining them down. Four fresh Cougars in. They play 11, and they all play a lot. Garcia, spinning hook, won't go. Meeks has the rebound. Meeks, down the lane. You know what, Rich? We talk about analytics a lot. Through the first two games, Carolina is in the bottom 10% of the country in transition defense. It showed there. I understand it's a very small sample, but their transition defense has not been good this year so far. College of Charleston, I know it's only three games, has dominated the first five minutes of all halves they've played. Burnham! The 
goodness. I like that kid, that freshman. I think he's going to be a really good player. Dan Burnham. And the freshmen are shining right now for College of Charleston. Baycott, tough catch, and a left-hand finish. Yeah, I mean, if he catches it in there, he's going to be a problem because he's just too big, too strong, and too skilled around the basket. Burnham weaving in. Tucker. Boy, he's played well off the bench. 17 points a game. Rises, misses the floater. Carolina likes tempo. Davis pushing. In the lane. Kicks. Baycott with the left hand. This kid is shooting 80% on the season. You can see why. The guy is oh! Wow. Ali, the sophomore. His first made three of the season. Did I say 90s? This may get in the hundreds. Oh, that might have been goaltending. That hit the backboard first. Meeks driving. Meeks missed it. And here comes Carolina. Caleb Love. Meeks got all the way back down for the rebound. I mean, the pace of this game. This is how the Cougars play. This is Pat Kelsey. Tough shot. That's when he should have kicked out. Who? Love escapes and dunks. Yeah, Ali took a gamble there going for the steal. And he's the last line of defense. He needed to be back there. He shouldn't have gone for that steal at half court. Both teams are waiting for that under 16 whistle. We are too. It <laughs> hasn't come yet. 16-12. We're actually going to see a half-court play now. Burnham, good three-point shooter. Ali takes another. On the tip out, R.J. Davis. Kick back out. Burnham, the trailer. They will, if they don't get a, a quick look, back it out. Meeks! Oh that was way out. He talked about the green light. He's got it. Love charge. It is a charge. And this is nuts. Back and forth they go. The speed of this game. If you want to... Bobby Kremens, Roy Williams. There they are. And they're wearing their colors. Roy is wearing his Carolina blue. And Bobby's wearing, I don't know what you would call it, maroon or whatever. The Charleston color. Out of the timeout. Everybody needed a deep breath. Back in is Rain Smith. Oh, yeah. Back in is Rain Smith. Somebody guard him. And you know, he has the reputation of a tremendous shooter. He hasn't shot it great this season. But he's got three threes tonight already. They better get to him a little quicker. Justin McCoy off the bench. Kerwin Walton in for North Carolina. And Brady Manick is in as well. Manick misses his first shot. Underwood the rebound, and up the floor they go. A bounce pass, ping pongs, and it stays with College of Charleston. Boy, Rain Smith, this guy has unbelievable range, and he's got a quick release. you got to get to him faster. No hand up. That hand came up late. That's too late on Rain Smith. Pat Kelsey told us he's one of the best shooters he's ever seen. Yeah, that's, well, I wasn't so sure until what I've seen so far. I'm not sure that Babacar Fai throwing up a three was in their uh, game plan. Stepping into a three is Garcia. Missed it. Manic keeps it alive. And the Oklahoma transfer crashes through bodies. Carolina holds the possession. Walton in the lane. You know what, Rich? Carolina likes a fast pace. Oh, the lob. And a block. A foul before on Caleb Love. Carolina likes a fast pace. This is a frantic pace. And I don't think frantic is really beneficial to North Carolina. They want to play fast, but right now this game is frantic. And they have the better big guys in terms of scoring inside. They need to settle this thing down a little bit to establish their inside game. Because they can't guard Baycott, but he's got to get involved in the game. Look at that. 83 possessions per game. That's third in the NCAA. And again, we asked Pat Kelsey, do you think you can do this against North Carolina? And he kind of winked and he said, we're going to freaking do 
what we freaking do. And he said freaking, by the way. Yes, but, he did. But it was like, look, this is what we do. This is what we did at Winthrop. This is what we're going to do here at College of Charleston. Well, you got to give him credit because I guess right now they are making Carolina play too fast. McCoy. Biggs on the perimeter. Garcia throws up a lefty. Underwood. Yeah, they have not been able to establish, because North Carolina is also normally a very good motion half for team. They brought no motion in this game so far. Underwood looking. Oh, That's crap. a lot. Yeah. This guy, Babacar Fai, is a true freshman out of Senegal. He was in the NBA Academy in Africa. And they absolutely love him here. Yeah, that was an uh, easy one. If you're going to play with this kind of tempo and pace, you got to go deep. So 11 are going to play. Fresh uh, legs back on the floor. And you know, it helps your chemistry. If this many guys play every game, your chemistry it is going to be pretty good because everybody's going to be involved. Walton kicks. Love. Walton will take the three. And hit it. It made a couple of passes on that possession and got a really good shot. Kerwin Walton's a very, very good three-point shooter. Probably the best returning three-point shooter. Both these coaches had to rebuild a bit. Meeks, a driving layup. Manic, one of the key transfers for North Carolina from Oklahoma. This is McCoy, transfer from Virginia, and a foul before the shot. That time Carolina ran a little bit of offense and Kerwin. We media timeouts. Yeah, this is what Pat Kelsey was explaining to us the way they look at the game. I like looking at the game that way, when, especially when I was at Manhattan and we were playing a high major team. Can we just hang in there every five minutes? I thought that was a good way to do it. There's another steal. Tucker! They're doing more than hang in there. And, and you know what it is, Rich? This is a team that doesn't press, but because of this frantic pace, you turn it over more. They don't press ever full court. They do all this in the half court, playing man to man with no traps. Manic misses the three. Oh, Sinachi Smart has the rebound. This is Ali. Ramir Ali, the transfer from Radford. Driving, and he draws the contact. Let's see if he gets free throws out of it. But that's what they do. They just make you worry about every play because they just play fast and loose. Brendan Tucker has been a great addition off the bench. Now, he's been here for three years, but he's coming off the bench, averaging 17 a game. This guy, the backup point guard, Famir Ali. I mean, this kid was a good player at Radford. He was the leading. He, he, Ali was their leading scorer, leading assist guy. So this guy played a lot where he was. And he gave Pat Kelsey and Winthrop headaches. So the fact that he is here at College of Charleston... Gary Parrish, some okay. tempo, huh? This is Ali. Burham with the right hand. They need, a, they need a timeout, what they need. They average almost nine steals a game. Davis. Oh, what? That's going to be a foul on College of Charleston. Huh. A nice block. The foul was on the sideline. Gary Parrish is somewhere in the middle of this madness. <laughs> Gary, what do you... Your, your thoughts on this first frenetic 10 minutes? Hey, Rich, you and I and, and, uh, and Lap talked to Hubert Davis early this morning, and, you know, as I was discussing with him how big this is for this program, these players, these fans, I asked him if he thought his players properly understood exactly what they were walking into tonight. He sort of smiled and said, probably not. Well, if they didn't, they, they certainly know now what they're involved in. 
Manic hits a three. Thank you, Gary. I mean, you haven't played again in front of fans for two years, so it's definitely a new thing, especially to go down the road with a tough environment, and that's what they're going to have to deal with. This, would be, this could be a tremendous experience for the, the star here. Manic feels he's hot and misses the shot. Hustle rebound, knocked out of bounds. Well, give North Carolina credit, not just Hubert Davis. They have a history of a non-conference going to smaller schools, especially in the Carolinas. Yeah, they do. You know what I mean? And that's something they believe in. Now, this is a two-for-one, so they, they're going to get two home games, and they've got to come on the road once, but not an easy place. Underwood strip. Walton Davis. That's a charge. I have to tell you this, too, Rich. I think that College of Charleston's transition defense has been really good. I mean, to get back that quickly and get in position to take a charge, that is really good transition defense. And right now, the pace on both ends, they're able to do what they need to do. And Rain Smith does a good job there of stepping in on R.J. Davis. The most important thing for Carolina, and this is Carolina we're talking about, is to just keep their points. It's a long game. But you gotta get to him. Finally misses. Caleb Love, RJ Davis. Both with two personal fouls. You Good time it? to get Baycott involved in this game a little bit now that they're in the half court. This is a big lineup out there right now for North Carolina. Nikki Black out high. Into the post, Baycott. You know, you gotta pick your poison. I think with 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 Leaky Black in the game, he's not a really good three-point shooter. McCoy's not a really good three-point shooter. So you can double Baycott with this lineup that Carolina has out there. Now, they may not want They don't want to give up open threes. But they, Carolina really has two guys out on the perimeter that aren't very good shooters. that you can take a chance because this guy here is too much of a load inside one-on-one. -on -one. It's not often that a team MVP as Baycott was last year, is also the most improved player. But he won both of those awards for North Carolina. I mean, he's missed, well, prior to this game, he was missed three shots the whole season. He was 10 of 11, now 22 points against Brown. Yeah, he came into the game shooting 81%. I understand it's only two games. It's pretty good. Smith falling away. And with that big lineup right now, Carolina starting to fare much better the rebounding wars and they're doing a little bit better not allowing them to get in the lane and kick it out for th open threes rebounding dead even right now 12 apiece that's off of North Carolina now one of the problems for North Carolina they really don't have a guard in the game right now no Caleb Love no RJ Davis now okay I understand that Kerwin Walton's a guard, but they don't really have a ball handler, and Leaky Black, probably the best ball handler in the game. But this is a very big team that's in for Carolina right now. Starting backcourt with two fouls each, Love and Davis. Look at Hubert Davis in a defensive stance. Size is bothering the College of Charleston right now, there's no doubt. Played for Dean Smith, coached under Roy Williams, nine years was an assistant to Williams at North Carolina. Had a really nice NBA career as well, did Hubert Davis, and Walton swoops in. And North Carolina on a run now has cut the lead to five. Pretty nice move by Hubert Davis to go with this lineup. Pat Kelsey gonna call a timeout. Eight and a half left, first half. College of Charleston, a 26-21 lead. Well, usually when I do a game this early in the year, I look at these players from last year, there's nobody to look at. They got three guys back from last year, only one that really plays. So it's like starting all over everybody. But I'll tell you what, they've adapted to that style. But now it's grand, they've been practicing since June. It's different than when I coached to start on October 15th. But they're really adapting to this style pretty well so far. Peaks falling away and falling down. This size is right now bothering College of Charles. They're trying to shoot over guys that are much bigger than them. Black running things out high. He's 6'8. 
Wong is 6'5", the shortest on the floor. Black rises and misses. Smart the rebound. Peeks up the floor. Thought about a freeze. Ball fake. And he couldn't get past Baycott. Baycott did a great job there moving his feet and staying in front. Ali. A rebounding foul. And Osanachi smarts. 5,000 in the house. They have been waiting and waiting for this one. And College of Charleston. For that, he was a student athlete at the University of North Carolina. He then went on to work in the UNC Athletic Department directly with the men's basketball program and developed a lot of relationships with Roy Williams, among others. So once he got the College of Charleston AD job, he started working to try to see if he could get the Tar Heels here in Charleston. Roy Williams agreed to a two-for-one deal, so they played in Chapel Hill last season. We'll play in Chapel Hill next season, but tonight it's here in Charleston, South Carolina, and it is a big night for this community. It sure is, and there's a history. I mean, North Carolina has been upset on this, uh, not necessarily this floor, but in this city before. They lost at the Charlotte Coliseum, I believe it was 98 as well. But you, you also, you see here, Rich, that the pace of this game has calmed down significantly, and that favors North Carolina. Uh, as soon as I said it, Ali, uh, Manic, numbers, good pass, Black, finish, no finish, Smart with the rebound. Tucker driving. Beautiful pass. Manic with the dunk. Love with the dime. Love back in with two fouls. Meeks, mid-range jumper. That's way strong, but he's fouled. Manic got him. Yeah, that was not a good foul by Manic, but you see Caleb Love pushing it up. Manic running the floor hard, filling that lane with the finish. Hubert Davis absolutely loves this guy. Graduate transfer from Oklahoma. And he said, you know, he makes me sad. And we kind of looked at each other. He said, he makes me sad because I realize I'm only going to have him for one year. <laughs> well, you know what? He is the modern big guy. You know, Dean Smith and Roy Williams for years played with two big men, almost like two centers, and they crushed people on the glass, and they ran screens, and they ran motion in the half court. Now he's got the four men, the Dawson Garcia, the Brady Maddox, that are big, but can step out. Creates a different look. A little more spacing on offense. Maybe not quite as good an offensive rebounding team as you've been historically, but... That's the way the game has evolved. You've got to have four guys on the floor almost that can make a three. John Meeks is just one for eight. Yeah, and he has not shot it well this year. He's historic. He's a guy who has made almost 60 threes every year he's been in college. Baycott going to work, and he's fouled. The College of Charleston's not made a field goal in almost five minutes, but still a five-point lead. Baycott goes to the line. Let the chips fall where they may as CBS Sports Network brings you the World Series poker tomorrow night, 11 Eastern. Four. Rain Smith back in. Smith has been a big three point weapon and he stumbles and walks. And all of a sudden, College of Charleston coming apart at the seams a bit. Well, you know, here's the book on Rain Smith. You got to make him put the ball on the floor. If you don't make him put the floor, ball on the floor, you have not closed out hard enough. Make him put it down and he's not as effective as he is when he catches and shoots. Manic spots up. Underwood. Burnham. First field goal in five minutes.
Love off the screen. Contact. No whistle. That easily could have been Love's third personal. Well, you get a long rebound here, and then these guys are filling lanes and getting out as fast as they can. That could have been a flop warning right there, too. Probably should have been a flop warning. And North Carolina's not helping themselves at the line right now. And they're just two of five. Baycott has nine to lead the Tar Heels. Underwood, the Division Three transfer. This is Farrar. Throws up a left-handed shot, missed it. Baycott begging for it against Farrar. Into the lane. Two easy. Spinning and scoring. Got no chance. Farrar is probably 6'6, six, 6'7. Six, six, but that's why if you play half court, you throw it to that kid every time, he's going to score. Underwood kicks. Burham turns down the three. Missed the floater. North Carolina dominating the boards right now. Walton. And a rebounding foul on the Cougars. I mean, you let this kid go one-on-one -on -one in the post. He's going to get wherever he wants. It's just too strong for Farrar. Too big, too strong, and too skilled. You heard Gary Parrish talk about scheduling this game. North Carolina has a, an ambitious schedule from here on out. They're playing in the Hall of Fame tip-off in Connecticut on Saturday against Purdue. Tennessee and Villanova are there as well. Yeah, you got Purdue. That is huge. And then you got Villanova that is really small. So you're going to have to adjust to all kinds of different players and teams. And, of course, Michigan in December and UCLA in December as well. I mean, you know, the, Purdue has one of the best front courts in the country between Travion Mitchell and Zach Eady. And then you have Villanova, which has the, the small but lethal perimeter game. So you got to adjust and adjust quick. That UCLA game is in Las Vegas. Third week in December. Underwood. This guy does not look like a Division III player. No, he's not built like a Division III player. And that's what Pat Kelsey told us. Shot clock's down. Got to get it up. He does. And hits it. And you know what? Dawson Garcia is back off him. He doesn't have the reputation of being a good shooter. But that was a 12-footer. A little bit too easy. Lead is five. Four minutes left, first half. Pace has slowed a bit from so those first 10 minutes. Tucker knocks it out of bounds. Now, Pat Kelsey arrived here when Earl Grant left to take over at Boston College. Earl Grant had a nice seven year run here. Now, the head coach. Boston College, Pat Kelsey, nine years at Winthrop. Big influence in his coaching life and life in general. Skip Prosser. I'd like to see Boston College do well since I paid so much tuition there for two kids. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of a closet Boston College fan. Steve Lapis disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> Under four minutes left. First half. Famir Ali. Firm launches. I'll tell you what, I watched the tape, and I said, I like that kid. His second three, Fort Mill, South Carolina. Local kid makes good. Local kid making threes. Baycott, turnaround, jump hook. I mean, they obviously have made a decision to not double him. Hey, they're up six, so whatever they're doing, they probably just want to keep doing it. They caught now with 13. He's 5 of 6 from the field. Just 3 of 7 from the line. Ali 
Shot was altered. Caleb Love. Ali got a hand on it. This is Tucker. Burham. Ali. That's short. Good extra pass there, too. Offensive foul off the ball, and that's on Kerwin Walton. What a scene tonight. 5,000 in the backcourt at the outset of the telecasts of North Carolina. Caleb Love, R.J. Davis. Together, they're averaging 34 points a game. They have just four in this game right yeah, now. Their guards have not played well in the first half, not offensively or defensively. Well, they haven't played a lot because both have two fouls. Meeks, just one for eight. This is again. And Justin McCoy with the rebound. The College of Charleston shooting 33%. And they're up six. 13 points off those 10 turnovers. That's been the di big difference in this game, too. McCoy lost it. Another turnover. Oh! Two more points off a turnover. Baba Carr, five. Meeks with the foul. Well, you're going to see Rain Smith in perfect help position there. I mean, really, the truth is, McCoy should not have been going there. He saw the help was just standing there. That was a bad decision. It was good defense, but it was a worse decision than it was good defense. Dawson Garcia hits the first free throw. Seven point game. Babakar five does not look like a guy that just started playing basketball. NBA Academy in Africa out of Senegal. He's a true freshman and he didn't get here until the fall. Yeah, it's, it's a great story. You know, Pat Kelsey was telling us he was a little concerned about him understanding from a language standpoint. He said he's been unbelievable. Yeah, they think he may be the smartest guy on the team. Tucker, head fake, driving, stripped. Are you kidding me? No. Come on. That, that, a rebounding foul on College of Charleston. They still had eight seconds on the yeah, shot. Yeah, that was not a good decision by Rain Smith there. Now, I understand this is how they play, but I mean, this is. I was impressed you didn't drop a down under. <laughs> Unnecessary. That's an actually smart with that foul. If North Carolina can shoot free throws. They can help themselves. They're just five of nine. Wow. Just about everybody who is anybody in this Charleston area is here tonight. We showed you Roy Williams, Bobby Cremins, John Cress is here, Les Robinson is here. Even Debbie Antonelli came down to yeah, say that's hello. Right. It's tough to get a reservation in some of the, the restaurants downtown, but tonight's a good night to do that. Underwood driving, Underwood scoring! No sign of Bill Murray here yet, but you never know. Right? The night is young. That wasn't, there was no help that time by Carolina. Black gets in and finishes. Down to a five-point lead, under a minute left. First half. Demetrius Underwood played at Dallas, Texas, Division Three, An All-American there twice. Tucker launches. Tucker hits! And that was over a much bigger guy in the point. 
Black into the corner. McCoy. Garcia the rebound. 20 uh, seconds left. Why wouldn't they hold for the last shot? I don't know what they're doing. Walton the three. Baycott the putback. Got it. 10 seconds left. I, I, I don't understand why they wouldn't hold for the last shot there. Tucker. Final seconds first half. Tucker. Bouncing. Falling away. Got it up. Frenetic. Electric. Pat Kelsey. And the Cougars. College of Points off turnovers for College of Charleston. Hubert said that's the issue in the first half. That's what he stressed to his players. They practiced it every day. Now they need to perform it. He said if they go better keeping the ball under their possession in these final 20 minutes, he seemed to suggest he thinks they'll be okay. All right, thank you, Gary. First five minutes, first half was dominated by College of Charleston. Keep an eye on the first five minutes here in the second half. And they start with a turnover. And obviously they tried to free Brady Manick in the low post, which is a good idea, but they turned it over again. Demetrius Underwood has played a really solid game at the point. Four assists. I mean, like you said, Rich, five turnovers for College of Charleston with this many possessions, that's pretty tough to do. That was good defense by R.J. Davis that time. That time he was attentive to Rain Smith. Smart knocked it out of bounds. North Carolina holds the possession. Pat Kelsey, first year, Cincinnati native. There's a point guard in college, Wyoming and Xavier. Baycott's been terrific. Black swings to Davis. Will pick and pop. Manic has the three. And that's what you called it exactly, Rich. That's a pick and pop. And that's what Brady Manic is so good at doing. Underwood backing in. Got a shoulder in. This guy, he's a graduate transfer from Division Three, Dallas, Texas, and he is just tearing it up. You know, he's got an older body than Caleb Love, and he used it on him there. Five, and Underwood. He's going right back in. This time he's on big, big time. <laughs> a bigger man, he forced the pass, and a rare turnover for the Cougars. Davis. Oh, oh wow. how sweet was that? R.J. Davis and a free throw. Well, it's important that R.J. Davis get involved in this game. He had 26 in their last game, and he had nothing at halftime here. That's just a great finish by R.J. Davis. Those smaller guys need to have that little floater there as part of their game. Davis and Love both had nice freshman seasons. Sophomores here. And you brought up the same point that Hubert Davis pointed out to us. But these sophomores have not played in an environment like this. Nobody played in a hostile environment last year. There were no fans or limited fans on the road. And I think the college of Charles is going to need this kid to going to win. John Meeks. He played a bad first half. That was a good shot, and he needs to make it. Was one of nine in the first half. Hits his first. That one almost went in. Suddenly, Davis, a little more aggressive, going to the bucket. You see John Meeks here. He's another kid, big, strong body. And then he takes Leaky Black in there, who's 6'7", and is a very good defender. Charles Lampton with the foul, and it's his fourth. Well, he's got to sit down, but they, they kind of just rotate that position anyway. Those guys aren't important scorers. They just rotate them. Lampton out. Sinachi Smarts out of Nigeria is in. And Smarts is senior. He's played a lot of minutes, played a lot of minutes in the first half. Three-point ball game. Opening minutes, second half. Manic tangled up with Smart. And I think Smart's going to get the foul. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. That's 
that's a, no, that's a, I don't know about that one. Uh, that's a no call. Yeah, that's a no call. Exactly, that's a no call. Carolina trying to take advantage. Love got in. Manic has the rebound. They've been asserting themselves on the glass. Love. Yes! Foul. Inside. I think the bucket counts. Yeah, I think so. And the foul is going to go on College of Charleston away from the ball. That could be a big swing there. That's bucket and possession. You can't see the foul, but it involved Manic again. It's a one-point game. North Carolina burns a timeout. We'll take one as well. This one's tightened up. It's a one-point lead for the Cougars. Not a bad start to this season. Double-double machine. North Carolina chance to take the lead. Another foul. And this is Famir Ali. And Kyle Charleston did a good job defending that out of bounds play that they went over today in shoot around. Ali doing a good job of fire. Still too much hands. North Carolina has not led in this game. Manic, nice catch and shoot. Side of the backboard. Four-year starter at Oklahoma, 235 threes. That's fifth all-time in Sooner history. Ali to the bucket. It's blocked. Baycott got there. Off missed shots, off blocked shots, and off turnovers. North Carolina's not been able to get much going in transition. No, but I tell you what, I think they're better off doing this. Pick and pop and manic again. I, I, I think they're better off in this game. You know, if you don't let a team do what they want to do, they have to adjust. Horton drives into tights. Kick back out. Three on the way, and it's good. That's Brendan Tucker. North Carolina's first lead didn't last long. Offensive foul, Manic. Still a point of emphasis. That screen has got to be a solid one. Yeah, you've got to give the guy some room. You have to give you have to give him a chance. Right here, he's moving, he's leaning in, and that's an offensive foul. You got to stay still. Two personal fouls for Brady Manic. Tucker Burnham is in. Best scorer on the floor in the first half. Horton a three is not a good shot. They're not shy about shooting that. No, I mean, look, they make 10 threes a game. They shoot a lot of them. Baycott tied up. Baycott, my goodness. You know, the slower the game, the more he touches the ball, the better for North Carolina. No doubt about it. Underwood reached to prevent the run out. I mean, I'm not saying North Carolina shouldn't run, but when you got a weapon like this in this game in the half court, like our mud game, I think it's the Carolina's advantage. Because Kyle DeTalson in the half court, they don't really have a post player to throw the ball to. Carolina does. Carolina was behind Brown most of the way. Their first lead was at 72 to 70 in that game. It ended 94-87, North Carolina. Baycott kicks. Love. Oh, Baycott right now. 
just dominating the paint. And now Carolina's starting to run a little half-court offense. 18 for Baycock. I mean, if you can make the College of Charleston play like this, 13 seconds to go on the shot clock. Underwood the miss. They have, by making shots, taken the air out of this frenetic pace of the Cougars. Whoa. Tough shot. That was a tough shot. Smart the rebound. Meet soft pass. He's fouled. Or was it kicked? It was kicked, I believe. But I'm not a big fan of the one hand, left handed bounce pass from the up here by Meeks. I'm not a big fan of that one. Smith contested three. Defense on him has been much better than the first 10 minutes of the game. R.J. Davis did a good job of contesting that shot and get too early. Pick, pop again. Manning misses the three. Meeks somehow ended back up in the hands of Smart. Yeah, Meeks, he got to get going. Smith. And Rain Smith. That's one thing Pat Kelsey said about this true freshman, the Australian. He's not afraid of anybody or anything. He's played internationally. He's played at a very high level in Australia. And he'll get two free throws. Played for the under-19 and under-20 national team. At the Australian Institute of Sport, which is Kind of the place for Australian basketball players to be developed. Randy Bennett at St. Mary's can tell you about that. North Carolina, number 18. Up a point. Six minutes in. Second half. And the whistles are a lot tighter inside the second half. I mean, a lot of fouls at the College of Charleston. Again, that's probably a big reason because of the half-court nature of what the game has become. It's just much harder to guard them inside. That time, Carolina ran their famous high-low with Baycott popping out and looking to post up Dawson Garcia. Garcia, one of the transfers that... Uh, has joined North Carolina. Pat Kelsey not happy about the foul discrepancy. You can see 17 fouls on Charleston, two on North Carolina. Two point game. Meeks against Leaky Black. With Baycott working. And Black blocks the shot. That was really good defense by Leaky Black. Walton feeds the post. Meeks, nice catch. Smith, three. Didn't go. Those were dropping in the first half. Yeah, that, again, I think Carolina's defense in transition that time was not bad. Davis has really created well here. In the second half, and he finishes that a 10-foot floater. Biggest lead for North Carolina at four points. Charleston at one point led by 11. Yeah, they're not turning Carolina over now, and more importantly, they're not stealing the ball and creating that pace that they want. Now they're forced to play half court. At least foul, Davis. The arm bar reached out. To slow him down. R.J. Davis with his third foul. Yeah, he's got to come out. Not for long. A couple of minutes. Pat Kelsey has played 11. And that's by design. Hubert Davis and the Tar Heels. Some really nice second half adjustments. 
Yeah, I mean, what Hubert Davis told them at halftime, that's exactly what they've done. Ali trying to create. Not many offensive rebounds out there right now for the Cougars. Garcia. Baycott trailing, driving, good moves, and scoring. Great footwork there by Armando Baycott. Six-point lead. Kelsey trying to get his team back in that groove. And a stoppage. For the Cougars, the tempo and the pace is exactly what they wanted. And look at the result of the second half adjustments by Hubert Davis. Much more of a half-court game. Yeah, they if they don't force turnovers, if they don't steal it, and they get stuck playing half-court, they cannot beat North Carolina. Meeks again, falling away again, air ball. You know, see, you see they don't have an inside guy to throw the ball to, as opposed to Carolina, who's got the inside guy to throw the ball to. And that's Baycott, who's one off his career high, and that's untouched. Caleb Love getting to the bucket. And now the lead is eight, and this drought and run continue. Oh, Baycott. He wanted to dunk that. Not going to happen. And Garcia looked like he walked. Meeks kicks it. Yeah, Caleb Love there. They just did not do a good job with that screen and roll. Just went wherever he wanted. North Carolina's hit six of their last eight field goals. Which has kicked their second half percentage up to 64%. Underwood. Five is foul. That's not a bad foul. He's not a very good free throw shooter. I mean, this is a bad pass by Baycott here. Underwood gets in the passing lane. Well, he's, he's seen Baycott knock a few away. And here is Fai, who, when he showed up in the fall, didn't speak much English. They were concerned about him assimilating in language and all that. And now, his language is terrific. His teammates absolutely love him. And Pat Kelsey said he may be the smartest player we have. He's a difference maker, he said, on the practice court, off the practice court. Well, right now, Rich, they got to figure out a way to stop Carolina in the half court. And that's easier said than done. Because in this situation, you scored the foul line. Now you know they're coming up for half court. So you got to figure out a way to make a stop and get a rebound. They Love switched the pick and roll that time. Love crossed over and Fi bumped him in the lane. So that was the adjustment that Pat Kelsey just made to switch this pick and roll. But Fi's in a tough spot there. He's got Love. Once he crossed him over, he was able to get him on his hip. Third personal on Fi. Check in with Gary Parrish. Gary? You know, we were talking uh, with Pat Kelsey earlier today, and one of the things he pointed out was Caleb Love just looks like a much different player for North Carolina because he's more efficient in taking better shots. And, you know, what you just saw there was a good example of that. This season, still young, but, you know, Caleb Love, field goal percentage way up, three-point percentage way up, lap. You mentioned to Pat Kelsey that's the difference between a freshman and a sophomore, and we're seeing it here tonight. Big difference from first half to second half, too, Garrett. Yeah, I know. Their first road game. So they had to, there was an adjustment period for sure. Burnham in the corner. Bangs home a three. Well, this kid's a good player. Cougars are looking for a spark to get this crowd back in it. Cardinals well, have done a nice job of keeping them out. Forcing a turnover would be the perfect play. Underwood. Into the corner. Underwood runs it down. And it's taken back, but out of bounds. 
it stays with College of Charleston a little bit of momentum here. Well, they come down, they had to get a stop, they get a steal, which is the best thing, and then they got a pretty good look from three. Underwood would gladly take that one to get the possession. Lead down to five. Ali. Baycott's in the middle. Tucker. Baycott. And that's going North Carolina's way. Get it to the big guy down low. Up. Lead stretches to eight. Ali. Baycott waiting. Somebody got it. That may have been Kerwin Walton. Baycott only credited with three blocks so far, but it feels like he's got more than that. Well, when he's in there, he creates a lot of problems for College of Charleston. This is a pretty good move. But just tough to finish it there. Still a lot of time in this game, but this is not trending well for College of Charleston. Burnham, that's a strong move. Yeah, you know, Brady Manick and Dawson Garcia, not e he's not an easy cover because he can shoot threes. He saw him put the ball on the floor. I'll tell you what, I like that kid. I saw something about him on that tape that I've seen that I think he's going to be a really good player. Garcia's three. Bad shot. I don't think Baycott's going to be out long. Burnham, back to work. Oh, he's lucky that got through. Smith. Got it! No real post-up presence for North Carolina right now. Walton. I believe the whistle was before the yeah, shot. I think so. I mean, it clearly sounded. I think Hubert's trying to buy the under eight timeout with Baycott out. But. Was the foul in the low blocks? Yeah, I, that's what I think. Yeah. Let's see. It's Garcia. That's a foul. And Smart. They should have called it right away. That's a foul on Smart. Can't use your hands like that. He was the one to initiate the contact. And that was well before the shot. So it's going to be one and one. That's the ninth team foul on Charleston. This, this game has been sold out for a long, long time. They could easily have sold another 5,000 tickets for it. And Garcia, who last year with Marquette went for 24 and 11 in a win over North Carolina. That was a memorable performance, so much so that when he decided to transfer, the door opened up here. I mean, he was an all freshman player in the Big East. Now with Carolina going small, interesting. Manic is a five man. Leaky Black is the four. I don't think that's a bad idea. Much much better to guard 
the three-point shooting. Well, that's bad defense. Underwood right by. Some nice screens along the way. They started the game getting hurt off the dribble. They can't let, get back to that North Carolina. They're going to stop them off the bounce. But no Baycott in there. It's a little easy to get to the rim. Davis in the corner. Davis launches. Long rebound. The College of Charleston won't go away. I think as you get that big guy back in, I know you was probably trying to get to the under eight. Oh no, here he comes. Ooh, Baycott started towards the table. Yeah, he's standing. No, I guess they're going to wait till the under eight. Back to a three-point game. I'll Underwood. You, look for College of Charleston to drive it. There's no, I mean, Brady Manick is not Baycott. Underwood missed. Manick has the rebound. Love ahead. Black with a catch in the yeah, bucket. That, that time they fell asleep. That bad transition defense. Five. Good move. Oh, my goodness. Oh. The oh. NBA Academy in Africa is teaching them well. How about that move? I didn't see that one coming, I can tell you that. Love. Manic. Back to five. Manic's been a load. And the pace is picked up in this one. Seven minutes left. Underwood. Big and strong. Missed the shot. He's got to make that. And Fry is clobbered. Manic, I believe, with the foul. If so, it's his fourth. And it is. Manic with four personals on the bench. Baycott, very safe in that category. He has just one, and he is one point shy of his career high. Mondo Baycott, 22 points on 9 of 11 shooting. Off the timeout, Ali Smith falling away. Oh, goodness. That was a tough, tough shot. I tell you, this kid, Rain Smith, he can really stroke it. 17 for Smith. Five threes. Five with the foul. We head down to Gary Parrish. Rich, that was really interesting to watch, that first possession out of the timeout, because I was in Pat Kelsey's huddle during that timeout, and he spent the entire timeout designing that play, going player to player, making sure every guy knew exactly where to be and what to do. And they came out of that timeout and executed it perfectly, got the exact shot he wanted him to get. Hey, Gary, I mean, watching the shoot around, this man, this coach, had his players' attention from start to finish of that practice. Yeah, he has a unique ability to be intense, but also keep it light. He is able to balance that really well, and it seems to resonate with his players. Well, I'll tell you, the other thing you should look at tonight is that his two best players have been freshmen. No kidding. Rain Smith, the freshman from Australia. Ben Burnham from Fort Mill, South Carolina. And John Meeks, who's been his best player in the first three games, but has struggled here tonight, goes to the line. Well you, uh, well, you know, when you're the top guy in the scouting report and you're playing against North Carolina, it's going to be a little harder. There's no doubt about it. COVID took away a lot of games last year, especially in the Patriot League. But this is a guy with two Patriot League titles and two trips to the NCAA tournament at Bucknell. They've had some good players over the years at Bucknell. They got the kid Muscala playing in the NBA still. That's going to be, I believe, a College of Charleston ball. It is.
Yeah, that's a good call. Looks like it's off R.J. Davis. Huh? It almost looked like Davis was yeah. out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the free throws cuts it to three. A three will tie it. This guy can give you that. Smith is fouled hard. They closed on him hard. They made him put it on the ground. And he was able to take advantage of it to get to the free throw line. I mean, they're all on high alert when it comes to him shooting threes now. That's for sure. The funny thing was, coming into this game, he was just 6 of 21 from three. But Pat Kelsey dismissed those numbers in our meeting today. So, believe me, we scouted this guy. We watch him every day in practice. He is a long-distance shooter, and he is going to be a great one. He said the great thing about him is he didn't even realize he was missing. It's like nothing, nothing phases this kid. He can miss eight in a row, which he's not going to do often, and he'll come back and shoot the ninth. The eight-point lead is down to one. Walton got the three. Wow. Kerwin Walton off the dribble step back. Ali. I don't like that one. Good save by Caleb Love. Stopping on a dime and hitting an 18-footer is Love again. Stop and step back. Meeks, Luki Black has given Meeks all he wants. That's a bump. And I think that is going to go Charleston's way. That's going to be a foul. I think the foul's on Baycott. Leaky Black has done a really good def job defensively on Meeks. He's a good matchup because he's 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, he's athletic. Make him take a tough shot. I think Baycott right there got tapped with a foul. Baycott now with three. Manic is in. Remember, he's got four. And Famir Ali. All Big South freshman team at Radford. That Kelsey had just three players left when he arrived. Transfers and freshmen, and he called it the great experiment. Can all of those guys play at the tempo he demands? The tempo and the pace that he ran at Winthrop. And so far, it looks like his experiment is working. Yeah, I mean, he's got a really, he's got a good team for the CAA. You know, the question is when you go on the road and you play this style, it's a lot harder to establish. But in this building, you can do it. I think the teams that played this way have a little tougher time on the road. That's a foul. Underwood reached. Double bonus for North Carolina. Third personal on Underwood. Yeah, I mean, he uses his hands, put his hand right on his hip. Freedom of movement is still. That is it. Point of emphasis. Game number three for Hubert Davis, and obviously the first road test. As Coach Roy Williams is in the house, Hubert told us that as an assistant, he just gave suggestions, and now He's got to make the decisions. You had to do that as a oh, yeah. successful assistant on a national championship team. You know, you got to move those 18 inches, boy. It's a lot more than 18 inches when you move over. That's an unforced error. And a big turnover. Yeah, they just been, have not been able to stop Carolina in the half court enough 
to get over the hump. Kerwin Walton. Whoa. Yes. Wow. Right in front of the bench. I mean, he was their best three-point shooter coming in. He made 56 threes last year. Well, this guy blow by it. And a foul. He's going to get Brendan Tucker to the line. Kerwin Walton's made a lot of big shots. Good screen there. Nobody, nobody gives help. Too much space for him. And Walton on the reach there. Tucker to the line. That nine-point lead, the biggest for North Carolina. Still four and a half minutes left. They, got, they have had all kinds of trouble with North Carolina plays in the half court stopping them. When this pace was crazy, it was much better for College of Charleston. Now, and they haven't even thrown Baycott the ball lately. But Baycott double-double, 22 and 11. They should look for him now. Love getting by five and finishing. Ten-point lead. And Pat Kelsey with four minutes left on the clock doesn't want to wait for that under four whistle. He wants that timeout. He needs that timeout. Yeah, he doesn't really have an answer of how to stop them, whether it's Caleb Love or Baycott. Right first half, they left to so many baskets. They've controlled the pace of this game in the second half. And that's what College of Charleston controlled in the first half, especially early. They burst out to an 11 point lead. They could use a burst here. Meeks off the screen. And Leaky Black has followed him everywhere. Yeah, Leaky Black has given him a big headache for sure. Starting and stopping in Baycott. I think blocked that with his elbow. I mean, they, they said this was a set play out of the timeout for Meeks. He couldn't get the ball, and then Baycott with a nice block there. Burham. Oh, sweet hook. Yeah, he's good. The Tar Heels offensively, though, but really good. Ali with a steal. And a fouler has his feet were out. His, feet, bounds, out. his feet were out. Ali, once he hit the deck and controlled the ball, he's out of bounds. Three and a half minutes left here. Mitch Waltz, Steve Lapis, Gary Parrish, Kamani Morales is our producer, the professor, Andy Friedman, our director. Love, driving, love, contact, it looks like Burham with a foul. Well, he's made great decisions going to the basket in the second half. This time, Smart doesn't give him enough help. He comes, he decides to guard him a little late, and he already had a head of steam. You're not going to stop him there. Yeah, they haven't guarded the pick and rolls very well. And that was something in, in practice today. That Pat Kelsey, not only was he trying to, to coach his team about it, Kelsey himself was defending the pick and roll. Yeah. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> And he, he was more concerned about the big guy rolling and ducking in than the guard taking it all the way. And the guards have taken it hard in the second half. Down nine. Tucker fouled. Walton bumped him. Walton is such a solid player. And he may have had something to do with Dawson Garcia coming here. They're both from Minnesota. And they both played on the same AAU team. That helps. Oh, definitely helps. I guess they got some players in Minnesota, that's for sure. There are a good number of players yeah. right now who are at the very top of the college basketball game. That's Ben Johnson. That ben Johnson's job, the new coach in Minnesota, is going to be to try to keep some of those kids at home. 
two of them here, obviously Garcia and Walton. But you've got Chet Holmgren at Gonzaga. And it's a contentious call. Officials confer, and it's going Charleston's way. And that looked like it went off of Baycott's yeah. head. Still nine point game. Burnham crossing over. Kept his balance. Got it up. Caleb Love, Baycott, altered the shot. And now from Carolina, you want to play a little bit of slow. You don't want to really take the air out of it, but you want to play a little bit slow and be a little bit more selective in the half court. So you got to give it to Baycott. Love! Nope. They caught fouls. It stops the clock. Four personals. Armando Baycott. Well, Caleb Love's got to finish this one here. Yeah, it's a foul. Brandon Tucker. Tucker was the MVP of that three-game tournament that Charleston hosted. He's really turned his game around. He's fast, I'll tell you. Charleston leaving some points at the foul line. Love splits the D. Baycott, that's a career high. 24 points. I, I tell you what, Caleb Love, he's got some, he got a burst in him. You watch Caleb Love come hard off this screen of Baycott. He splits the double team. Caleb Love is really good. Love and Davis just sophomores. Baycott, a junior. Meeks. He's not been tough night. Two for 14 from the field. And then North Carolina's lead is 10. North Carolina's lead is 12. As Manic. Ball was touched and went in anyways. Nice pass by Baycott. I'll tell you, this is a this is a good experience for North Carolina. Ali, oh, foul. You want a foul there. To get a free throw. Yeah, that's, that's just not good defense. We talked about playing in this environment. Hubert, Hubert Davis said, look, this is what we're going to face in the ACC and he said you know what when I was a player I liked this environment and the best part was watching people get up and leave for the parking lot with five six minutes left in the game that's not happened at least not yet but I'm with you this is a, this is, a I mean, this is why you schedule these games if you're North Carolina hey you didn't play in front of fans for two years you come in here that's a bad pass that's Ali then my fall asleep this team, as we've seen, can get it going quick. Eight-point game, minute 20 left. And they don't really need to foul. I play one possession and see what happens. You got to go to Baycott at the end of the shot clock or some kind of pick and roll with Caleb Love. Here it comes. Love on Smith. Around the screen, step back three. No, Baycott tip. Not a great shot. Ali launches. 
And had that gone down. Yeah, now you get a foul. If you're going to give yourself a chance, you got a foul. And Ali does. Well, the last time North Carolina came here and lost in 2010, Roy Williams, Bobby Cremens were matched up. There's they, about. Uh, they never had to worry before about beating the traffic out of here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> There's about 1,500 wins between those two. That man's working on win number three. They've been up there all night. I mean, fans have come by to say hello, both Carolina fans and Charleston fans. Well, Bobby lives in Hilton Head. I know that all he does is play golf. And Roy plays a fair bit himself. Pat Kelsey and the Cougars. Down 10 again. And if they play Villanova, then the question is who is Garcia and Brady Manic going to guard because those guys are quick and they can shoot. Tucker missed the three. This is a great experience as well for the College of Charleston to play this caliber of a team to see what their style of play would look like against an opponent like this. And it to be honest with you, it looked really good for 20 minutes. Oh, no, it was. It, it, it's a good night for both these teams. You know, uh, um, College of Charleston showed the fans here what they're going to play like. Um, they they gave them an entertain. They entertained them. They, they were in this game all the way, really, to the last couple of minutes. Um, so, yeah, I think it was a good showing for Pat Kelsey and his team. And as we said, for Hubert Davis, those guys are going to come away with a, you know, a solid road win. He's got, a tough environment. he's got an all Carolina staff as well. Brent Frederick, Jeff yeah. Lebo, Sean I re, May. I, I know Jeff Lebo for a long time. I know Pat Sullivan. I recruited him. He's from New Jersey. Uh, I know him for a long time, too. Nine point game. 27 seconds left. Every win counts. Yo, no doubt. And now you see College of Charleston try to pull court pressure. Yeah, you're stealing the three. Otherwise, North Carolina just has to make free throws. Manick's going to hold it. And then he'll walk to the free throw line. Brady Manick, this is a, you know, Hubert Davis, when he got the job, had to do two things. Check the transfer portal to see who was leaving. Check the transfer portal to see who was available. And when this guy popped up, he jumped at the chance to come to North Carolina. That's the, the art of that, I think, is pretty simple. It's just click refresh if, yeah. if you're an assistant coach in the off season to see who has entered. And obviously, look, COVID and even the truncated season last year, that has caused a lot of players to, to get to the end of their eligibility as a graduate with an extra year many players have decided I've played four years here I, I want to move on and that's exactly what Manic did at Oklahoma yeah, I mean it, it's changed the landscape of college basketball without a doubt final seconds here in Charleston there'll be no parade on King Street North Carolina has come to Charleston and taken care of business And number 18 will escape out of here with an 11-point win. 3-0 is Hubert Davis on a nice road test. And for Pat Kelsey, I think you 